When you are curious about the word order in Turkish and take a look at any grammar book or video, the most basic word order that you're going to see is subject, object and verb is in the following sentence. Sercan evi sattı. Sercan evi sattı. Sercan is a subject. Sattı is the predicate. Verb. Sattı. And evi is the definite direct object. Evi. Sercan evi sattı. In verbal sentences, the stress falls on the part right before the predicate. In verbal sentences, the stress falls on the part right before the predicate. This means in this sentence, the sentence stress will fall on the definite direct object, ev, because it is the constituent that is right before the predicate. Sercan evi sattı. Therefore, even though the translation of this sentence is Sercan sold the house, this word order has the meaning of it is the house that Sercan sold. Evi is the part which has a stress. Now, let's change the word order as we would like. With these three elements, subject, object and verb, we can make six sentences. We formed the first one already. Sercan evi sattı. Sercan evi sattı. Now, the rest. Evi Sercan sattı. Sercan sattı evi. Evi sattı Sercan. Sattı Sercan evi. Sattı evi Sercan. As you see, it is possible to move every constituent, even the subject and the predicate. All of these sentences are grammatically correct and all of them are translated as Sercan sold the house. However, these sentences are used in different contexts. Always remember, in verbal sentences, the part which comes before the predicate has the stress. There is one exception to that, obviously, when the predicate is at the beginning of the sentence, and we will talk about that later in this video. If we want to stress by whom the house is sold, then we can use the following sentences. Evi Sercan sattı. Evi Sercan sattı. Or Sercan sattı evi. Sercan sattı evi. As you see, in both sentences, the subject Sercan comes right before the predicate. These two sentences have the meaning of it is Sercan who sold the house. Basically, by using these sentences, we guide the listener to focus on Sercan. But if you want to stress the selling of the house, then we can use the following sentences. Sattı Sercan evi Sattı Sercan evi or Sattı evi Sercan Sattı evi Sercan As you see, in both sentences, the predicate sattı is at the beginning of the sentence. In such cases, when the verb is at the beginning of the sentence, then the stress falls on the verb. And when we use a sentence evi sattı sercan, evi sattı sercan, the stress falls on evi once again. Evi sattı sercan. Now, let's add more elements to the sentence. In this example, I'm not going to show you all of the variations, but I'm only going to give you a couple of examples without changing the position of the subject and the predicate. Sercan dün bana evini sattı. Sercan dün bana evini sattı. Basically, in this sentence, the constituent right before the verb evini has the stress. It is a definite direct object. Sercan dün bana Evini sattı. The meaning of the sentence is It is his house which Sercan sold me yesterday. Sercan dün bana evini sattı. Sercan dün evini bana sattı. Sercan dün evini bana sattı. Now we focus on bana which is right before the predicate. The meaning of the sentence is It is me 
whom Sercan sold his house yesterday. Sercan dün evini bana sattı. Sercan bana evini dün sattı. Or Sercan evini bana dün sattı. Now we are focusing on the word dün which is before the predicate. The meaning of the sentence is it was yesterday when Sercan sold me his house. Now using the same sentence let's change the position of the subject. Dün evini Sercan bana sattı. Dün evini Sercan bana sattı. Here the stress is again on the word bana. The reason is it is placed before the predicate. So the meaning of the sentence is again it is me whom Sercan sold his house yesterday. But when I say bana evini dün Sercan sattı. Bana evini dün Sercan sattı. What is stressed and focused is Sercan. The meaning of the sentence is again it is Sercan who sold me his house yesterday. And now let's change the position of the verb. Sattı Sercan dün bana evini. Sattı Sercan dün bana evini. Here the verb, the predicate is at the beginning of the sentence. Therefore the stress is on the word sattı. What we want to emphasize is the selling. Bana sattı evini dün Sercan. Bana sattı evini dün Sercan. So where is the stress now? Yes, it is on the word bana because it is placed before the predicate again. The meaning is it is me whom Sercan sold his house yesterday. One important information is that such sentences where the predicate is not at the end of the sentence are mostly used in spoken language or in informal written Turkish. Now let's see a sentence including an indefinite direct object. Do you remember one of the most important facts about the indefinite direct object in Turkish? I have mentioned it many times in the previous videos. The indefinite direct object is placed right before the predicate no matter where the predicate is in the sentence. Babam her akşam hikaye anlatır. Babam her akşam hikaye anlatır. In such sentences it is not possible to change the position of the indefinite direct object. So it is not possible to say babam Hikaye her akşam anlatır. Babam hikaye her akşam anlatır. Or hikaye babam her akşam anlatır. Hikaye babam her akşam anlatır. As I have mentioned, if you want to move the indefinite direct object or the verb, they need to be moved together so the indefinite direct object stays immediately before the predicate. For example, Hikaye anlatır her akşam babam. Hikaye anlatır her akşam babam. Or babam hikaye anlatır her akşam. Babam hikaye anlatır her akşam. And the stress falls on the indefinite direct object hikaye. However, if you absolutely want to change the position of the subject and place it immediately before the predicate to put more focus on that, which in this case means to move the indefinite direct object to another position, there is a way to do it. In that case, you will need to add the accusative case suffix to the word. And this will make it a definite direct object, which means you can move it wherever you want in the sentence. For example, hikayeyi her akşam babam anlatır. Hikayeyi her akşam babam anlatır. Or babam anlatır her akşam hikayeleri. Babam anlatır her akşam hikayeleri. Just as a side note, today I gave you the meanings of the sentences when we changed the word order. What you need to know is that if you translate those meanings back to Turkish literally, the sentence structure will be different. And if you're curious about that, just let me know. Anyways, let's go on. In Turkish, the parts of the sentences can be stressed in their typical positions as well. And intonation 
can also change the focus depending on the case. We can talk about these in another video when the time comes. It has been a lot of information today and I am pretty sure it's overwhelming. Now, if you would like, give me some examples in the comments section. And when you have any questions, don't hesitate to get in touch. This is the last video of how to form sentences in Turkish as of now. In the future, I will continue as I teach you more complex structures. You know that already. Turkish language is crazy, but a lot of fun. Thanks for watching and supporting, but don't leave just now. To finish this video, let me form all of those sentences, right? Ben şimdi gidiyorum. Şimdi gidiyorum ben. Ben gidiyorum şimdi. Gidiyorum ben şimdi. Gidiyorum şimdi ben. Şimdi ben gidiyorum. See you in the next videos. Görüşmek üzere.